Sometimes as women, whether you're young or old, we tend to overlook warning signs. It can be easier to hope that the person would change rather than ending the relationship. But what if you finally decide to leave and they continue to pop up and be around you? What if your boundaries are constantly disrespected? Or worse, what if your life is at risk and it's too late? This is the case of Tiffany Johnson. Stay woke. Johnson was a 25 year old from Iowa who later moved to Ulysse, Texas. She was one of four siblings and had a twin brother. Growing up, she was very close to her family and they described her as outgoing, always smiling and very down to earth. Tiffany was known to be a tomboy who just enjoyed being herself. Like she was very content in who she was and nobody else could tell her different. Now, despite being the youngest sibling, Tiffany had a strong desire to grow up and start a new life for herself. In 2014, she moved to Texas with her twin brother, Asher, and they rented an apartment together in Ulysse, Texas. Tiffany found a new job at an insurance company and was excited about this new chapter in her life. She also started dating, although initially she didn't enjoy the process because the guy she was seeing at the time was involved in a committed relationship. But before we jump into today's case, I do want to thank Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is a fragrance-based subscription service that lets you choose over 600 end brands to try. Now with summer here, you need Scentbird if you're trying to smell good, going to cookouts, you know, going out with your friends, or even going to work. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply and you can try out the fragrance before committing to a full-size bottle. With the mini SB vials, which I love, you can easily like throw it in your handbag or pocket and you're pretty much out the door. And with the new cases, you just pull each side of the case apart and you can try your new fragrance this way or you could place it in the center of the vial, aligning the nozzle and lining up each of the magnets. And you can just twist the top of the vial to lock and unlock the spray function. So it's very simple and easy to use. So my favorites are Mare Peony Silk, which really smells amazing. It's Pink Peony, Jasmine, and Rose. It's more of a sweet, soft smell you can put on when you wanna go to brunch or date night. Now, Ex Nihilio by Vespert Glitz is also a nice smell with mandarin, vanilla, and cedar wood. And the Harmonist Metal Flower is a gem. I definitely loved this cute design. <laughs> um, it's definitely a very soft and feminine light smell. Use code LN55 for 55% off your first fragrance. That's only about $8 for your first month. Available in the US and Canada. Thank you again, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. And let's jump back into today's case. After discovering that her boyfriend was cheating on her with another girl, Tiffany and the other girl surprisingly formed a friendship. I'm pretty sure they bonded over the fact that they both dated the same guy without knowing it. Thank God they left him alone. So the other girl really took a liking to Tiffany and introduced Tiffany to her brother, Chris Ravel believing that they would be a great match. When Tiffany and Chris met, they hit it off and started dating, spending a lot of time together. So Tiffany was definitely feeling happy. She just moved to a new place, got a new apartment. She's feeling like a woman now. She's definitely in a happy, excited space right now, especially going through a heartbreak and meeting a new friend and now being introduced to a new person. She's feeling good about things, but we all know with every relationship, there's highs and lows. But with Tiffany and Chris, the low points came in like a storm. 
Chris was older than Tiffany and was actually in his 30s. So at times, Tiffany would express to her mother that Chris was very controlling. Tiffany's mother, which her name is Deb, didn't really like the relationship because she would call Tiffany often and would hear them arguing. Most of the arguments, unfortunately, consist of what Tiffany would wear. Chris didn't want Tiffany wearing makeup or wearing tight clothes. He felt like she should wear baggy clothes like oversized t-shirts and sweats to not show off her figure. Tiffany was a tomboy, but she was also a 24 year old woman and she loved getting her hair done and she loved wearing makeup and looking nice. Like she took pride in how she looked. But Tiffany eventually stopped wearing makeup and taking care of herself. Like she wasn't dressing the same. She wasn't doing her hair anymore. And when her mother noticed this, she asked her like, hey, Tiffany, what's going on? Like, why aren't you taking care of yourself? And she expressed to her mother that she just didn't want men looking at her. So the fact that Chris was slowly changing Tiffany, Deb felt very uncomfortable about the relationship. And if I was a mom and I saw a man trying to change my daughter into something that she she's not, that would definitely concern me as well. Now, Tiffany's twin brother, Asher, also would notice that Tiffany's and Chris' relationship was toxic. He said that they often argued all the time and Chris would be aggressive towards her. So after a while, Tiffany got really tired of being abused emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. Like at this point, she was she was tired and she definitely tried to leave him in August 2014. She shared with her mom that Chris one time grabbed her, basically putting his hands on her. So Deb at this point was like, OK, you need to get out of this relationship. Chris didn't have a good track record before he actually met Tiffany. He had been previously arrested and was on parole after serving time for burglary with attempt to commit assault. Considering this factor, there were some red flags that couldn't be ignored. In 2016, Tiffany's aunt went to go visit her and Asher, and she had already heard about Tiffany's boyfriend, Chris, so she already had some reservations about him. So when she finally met Chris, she remembered that Tiffany had car trouble one day, and when she called Chris for help, he refused, saying he was playing video games. So it was clear to Tiffany's aunt that this boy did not care about her niece, and deep down, Tiffany knew this as well. A couple of weeks passed after that situation and Tiffany texted her aunt asking her for advice on how to break up with someone. So her aunt suggested that Tiffany should just tell Chris, hey, I need some space and I just need time to focus on myself. And I'm pretty sure most of us sent that text before to a, for, to an ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend, especially when you don't want things to be messy or chaotic. I mean, the truth is you really do want to take care of yourself and focus on yourself. But I do believe Tiffany knew that Chris was kind of, you know, not right up here and he would go from zero to 100. So Tiffany just kind of wanted to leave the situation peacefully and she had, and she did. But even though Tiffany felt like she could finally move forward and leave this toxic relationship behind her, Chris wasn't ready to walk away or leave Tiffany alone just yet. Chris spiraled out of control after the breakup and began sending Tiffany hateful text messages, expressing his hatred for her and claiming she should have never left him. Despite this, Chris continued to visit Tiffany's house, even though their relationship had ended. Chris had a friendship with Asher, which he used as an excuse to visit the house every day. However, it was clear to everyone that he was there for reasons unrelated to his friendship with Asher, completely disregarding Tiffany's boundaries and personal space. To avoid Chris, Tiffany often stayed in her room. Asher revealed that whenever Chris visited, he would inquire about Tiffany seeing other men or just really being unfaithful. It became evident that Chris was using his friendship with Asher solely to gather information about his sister, showing little regard for their friendship. 
So a month had passed since the breakup and now it was October. Tiffany was ready to move forward from Chris and wanted to start seeing other people. She met a man named Russell and they spent some time getting to know each other. They definitely liked each other. So on October 16th, 2016, she invited him over to her apartment to have a dinner. Now, Asher's girlfriend also worked at the same insurance company as Tiffany. They decided to leave work together and go to Tiffany's house. When they arrived at the apartment, Tiffany went to freshen up because she was expecting Russell to arrive shortly. However, not long after their arrival and while they were setting up, Chris showed up at the house. He appeared happy and excited, holding beer and alcohol, as if he was ready to stay over and have dinner too. Tiffany was taken back and confused by Chris's presence. Having both her current partner and her ex at the same place was not a good situation, as it easily could have led to drama and it just was a messy situation. So when Chris arrived, Tiffany and Asher's girlfriend pulled Asher aside and asked him if he had invited Chris because Russell was coming over. Asher replied that he didn't invite him even though Chris had texted earlier in the day about coming over to watch a football game. Tiffany came up with a plan to meet up with Russell at a local Walmart and speak to him there to really avoid Chris. So when Tiffany left and stormed out, Chris is looking like, Tiffany, where are you going? And he just focused on her. Like he's not focused on anybody else but her. So Chris and Asher can see Tiffany from the balcony attempting to pull out of the parking space because Tiffany really wanted to just get out of there, right? But her car was still giving her trouble and she couldn't leave the parking space. Tiffany then texted Asher from downstairs to let him know that, hey, my brakes are not working. Asher reminded her that the car had been working fine when he drove it previously. So Chris can clearly see that there's a problem with Tiffany and her car and just it's chaotic right now. So Chris then runs downstairs to help Tiffany. By the time Chris went downstairs to help Tiffany, a fight broke out between the two. Tiffany was clearly frustrated and started telling Chris to leave, yelling at him that she doesn't want him there, she doesn't want to be with him. And while Tiffany and Chris were arguing back and forth, Russell arrived at the house. Now Tiffany tried to leave and meet up with Russell, but it was too late at this point. So when Russell came over, Tiffany was so engrossed in her conversation with Chris that she didn't even realize Russell was trying to get her attention. Like at all like she was so focused on telling Chris to leave her alone and I'm pretty sure I can understand that because Tiffany was like look I'm tired of you you now at this point you're interfering with my future plans with you know trying to move forward and dating other people I understand now that you're coming over to my house and trying to kiki with my brother but now you're literally affecting my life plans, my flow, my day to day. So I really feel like Tiffany was just over it. So Russell went inside and informed Asher that he wasn't able to speak with Tiffany and she seemed upset. You know, she was outside arguing with this guy. And when Asher now goes out to take a look over the balcony again, he noticed that Tiffany and Chris were out of view. So they were still arguing, but they were closer to the garage area. So they wasn't even near the apartment view where Asher could see what's going on anymore. So after a few minutes of Tiffany and Chris arguing back and forth, Chris came back upstairs, grabbed his beer and alcohol, and got ready to leave. Like, he was clearly upset. While gathering his things, he looked at Russell and said, I should have known this all along. Almost insinuating that Tiffany had been cheating with Russell during their relationship. So just before Chris left, Asher asked him, well, hey, where's Tiffany? Chris replied that Tiffany had left in her car with a mechanic and drove off. Now this clearly confused Asher because the only people in the parking lot were Tiffany and Chris. Additionally, Tiffany had walked out of the house without shoes on, expecting to come right back inside. So Asher, Russell, and Asher's girlfriend immediately called Tiffany's phone, but she did not answer. Concerned, Asher and Russell went outside to look for Tiffany, only to realize that she was nowhere in sight. 
The last time anyone saw Tiffany was on October 10th, 2016. Tiffany went missing after having an argument with her ex-boyfriend, Chris. She had plans to have dinner with Russell at her apartment and had returned home from work to get ready for the dinner. Therefore, it's unlikely that Tiffany ran away and she had made arrangements for that night. During the search for Tiffany, Asher and Russell went over to Tiffany's car and saw her car keys lying on top of the driver's side. Chris informed them that Tiffany had left with her car and a mechanic, so it was strange for her to leave her keys behind. Asher then walked over to the garage area where he had last seen Tiffany and found Chris next to his car. He noticed that Chris' trunk was open and the driver's side door was also open. The car was not even parked in a designated spot. It was like tucked away on the grass area. Like you really couldn't see what Chris was doing or what he was putting in the trunk. Um, standing in the position where Asher and Russell was. Like they couldn't see what he was doing. They just know that, you know, the trunk was open and he's putting something in the trunk and the door is open. But they don't know what what's going in the trunk. So Asher and Russell decide to walk to the other side of the building to get a different angle and observe what Chris is putting inside the car. However, when they arrived, Chris had already sped out of the apartment complex. Like Chris was out of there. Now, based on this information, it is possible to assume that Asher and Russell may have been afraid of Chris. This could explain why they didn't physically approach him to find out what he was doing. It seems like fear was the only reason they didn't simply walk up to him and investigate the situation because I thought about that. Like, why didn't they walk up to him? Why didn't they, you know, see what was going on up close? But at this point, I could only think fear was really the reason. They really, you know, wasn't sure. When Asher and Russell went to the area where Chris' car was parked after he left, they discovered Tiffany's cell phone, one of her socks, and shot glasses that Chris had brought to the house. Asher immediately called Chris from Tiffany's phone, expressing his concern and asked him to return to the apartment as soon as possible. Asher also mentioned that Chris had been acting strange. In response, Chris questioned if Asher was accusing him of something and promised to just return to the apartment within five minutes. However, Chris never returned to the apartment. After multiple attempts of calling Chris, Asher finally reached Chris on the phone. Chris explained that he was driving on the interstate and had been pulled over by the police before abruptly ending the call. Investigators arrived around 10.58 p.m. that night and the officers spoke to Asher Russell and Asher's girlfriend and asked them to call Chris. When Chris answered the call, the officers informed him that he was going to be a suspect and needed to return to the apartment. Chris finally arrived at the apartment. It had been about an hour. He was wearing a different undershirt and appeared sweaty. Chris told the officers that he didn't know where Tiffany was and that the last person she was talking to was an older man. According to Chris, Tiffany was discussing getting her car fixed with this mechanic. To be honest, the officers found his behavior to be very suspicious and decided to check if Chris had actually been pulled over earlier that afternoon. It was discovered that Chris had lied about being pulled over and once the police noticed that he was lying and his story was inconsistent, he was arrested. During the investigation, when Chris was questioned about Tiffany's disappearance, he displayed a lack of concern or sadness. He referred to Tiffany as that girl and showed minimal interest in assisting with her search. His primary focus was on not being late for work and having access to his car. The disappearance of Tiffany left her family feeling overwhelmed and distraught. One minute Tiffany was here and the next she wasn't. Her family strongly suspected that Chris was responsible for Tiffany's disappearance, but it was a matter of proving his guilt and actually finding Tiffany. Officers went to Chris's mother's house to conduct a search in the hopes of finding any evidence related to Tiffany 
And during the search, they discovered several items such as a black bra and a white t-shirt. Now, Chris' mother mentioned that Tiffany sometimes left clothes at their house, but investigators didn't find anything directly linking Chris to Tiffany's disappearance. The investigators then reviewed neighborhood footage and observed that Chris arrived at his mother's house around 10 p.m. on the day Tiffany went missing. This raised questions about what Chris was doing between leaving Tiffany and Asher's apartment and arriving at his mother's house. However, Chris never entered his mother's house, but only stayed like drived around in the area for 20 minutes and then he left. Chris' movements throughout the entire day were very suspicious, but investigators could not find any solid evidence linking him to Tiffany's disappearance. So investigators began to delve into Chris's past. They discovered that years prior, Chris was actually involved with another girl who also vanished. Her name was Taliba Islam. Taliba and Chris met in high school and dated for a couple of years after graduation. It was well known that Taliba was in an abusive relationship with Chris. Like this was something that everyone pretty much knew. One night, authorities were called because Taliba, who was nine months pregnant with Chris's child, was punched in the stomach by him. So the relationship was definitely extremely toxic and I'm pretty sure Taliba tried to leave and she did try. But after giving birth, Taliba wanted to work on their relationship. And I'm pretty sure her having their son she probably thought that things would change, but things remained turbulent. On January 16th, 2006, Taliba went to Chris's house with the baby, but Chris became extremely upset and a fight broke out and he literally punched her in the face. Chris's sister witnessed this incident and was also afraid at what was going on. And that's another thing that I couldn't ignore. I don't understand why Chris's sister would set Tiffany up knowing the background that her brother had. You know what I mean? Like, that's another conversation for another day, but I don't know. So later, Taliba called someone to come pick her up. And after that phone call, Taliba was never seen again. So literally after that night, Taliba was, I'm pretty sure, devastated. She was hurt. She called someone to come get her and that was it. No one heard from Taliba ever again. Chris told Taliba's family that she dropped the baby off and never returned for the baby. Taliba's family immediately sensed that something was wrong because Taliba would never abandon her son. Taliba's family immediately sensed that something was wrong because Taliba would never abandon her son. Weeks after Taliba's disappearance, Chris did file a missing persons report and informed the police that Taliba left the house that night, got in a car, and was never seen again. Taliba's case definitely made people view Tiffany's case with a fresh perspective because not only was Taliba an ex-girlfriend, but Taliba was actually the mother of his child. So I don't understand how you can ignore the fact that she just disappeared like that, knowing the history that they had and now knowing, you know, how Tiffany's and Chris' relationship is now. So two women went missing after being last seen with Chris. It is difficult to ignore the possibility that Chris could be a dangerous individual. In August 2019, after three years with still no sign of Tiffany or Taliba, Chris went on trial. Chris was labeled as a possessive and unhinged boyfriend despite though the lack of DNA evidence linking him to Tiffany's disappearance. The prosecution presented witnesses who claimed that Chris was unstable and read text messages that he sent to Tiffany during their breakup, which strongly suggested that Chris had a motive to harm her. Therefore, on August 22, 2019, 
Chris was found guilty of kidnapping and sentenced to life in prison. Both Tiffany's family and Taliba's family made impactful statements in court, leading the jurors to believe that Chris should be held accountable for their disappearances. Although Chris received a life sentence, he is eligible for parole in 2046. Now, as of March 2023, Taliba's family were able to receive some closure. DNA testing confirmed that the human remains found on March 2nd, 2023, near the 900 block of South Hughes Avenue, belonged to Taliba Fainton bin Islam. Family believes that Chris is responsible for the disappearance and death of Taliba. Tiffany's family continues to pray for closure and hopes to one day find Tiffany or lay her to rest. When the truth is unknown, it leaves a wound of uncertainty. And I hope that Chris can one day reveal the real truth to both families. Tiffany noticed all the red flags with Chris and finally decided to leave him. However, things spiraled out of control after she left. As we approach the end of this year and Christmas, I pray that families find closure. Let's keep every family in our prayers. Father God, we all come together tonight, Father Lord God, and we pray for both families. We pray for Tiffany's family and we pray for Taliba's family. We pray for peace, joy, and healing, Father Lord God. First and foremost, Father Lord God, hold both families in your hands, Lord God. Don't let them go, especially during the days where they feel lonely, where they feel, where they feel depressed, where they're confused, Lord God, where, you know, they're just grieving lord especially during the holidays lord god i ask you father lord god to just bring hope back into their life father lord god we break every demonic father lord god force father god that wants to keep this family down we break it father lord god and we cover them with your blood father lord god we ask you father lord god for the truth especially with tiffany's case lord god she is still missing lord she is your daughter she is yours father lord god i ask you father lord god that you bring truth um for this family so that they're able to at least find her and bring her back home or at least able to lay her down lay her to rest father lord god father god um you were able to expose where taliba's body was and give you know that family at least some closure lord god so we thank you first for that father god for opening the door this year in 2023 for taliba's family lord god and i ask you father lord god to continue hold them in your hands lord god just hold them and let them know that you are present during the times when they feel like you're not father lord god show up to them show up in their dreams meet them where they're at right now tonight father lord god and bring them healing a healing father lord god that no one could understand because it's from you a healing father lord god that is so calm and so pure father lord god Keep us all safe during the holidays and going into the new year. Keep us all safe, Father Lord God. Keep us safe when we're traveling to work, when we're traveling to school, Father Lord God. Let your will be done in our hours. Anybody that needs to leave our life, Father Lord God, just take them out, Father Lord God. Do a major sweep and clean up, Father Lord God. Any men and any women that don't need to be in our life that is not sent from you, Father Lord God, send them away father god and keep us all safe father lord god i pray for every woman that is going through domestic violence right now as we speak i pray father lord god that you protect them you cover them with the blood of jesus christ first and foremost and you give them a, you provide a way for them to leave father lord god bring family bring friends and bring strangers their way that can help them get out of the situation and first and foremost i pray for the victim that is getting abused father lord god i pray father lord god that you give them the strength to leave and to never turn back and go back and i pray for the abuser father lord god i pray father lord god that you bring rest and peace to their disturbing hearts father lord god because you're able to save everyone and anyone and i pray father lord god that they're able to fall on their knees and repent to you father lord god i, I pray father lord god that they're able to repent to you father lord god and 
understand the evil that they're doing, Father Lord God. Let them know that you are God. Let them know, Father Lord God. So I just thank you, Lord God, during this season, Father God, that you're going to bring peace. You're going to bring joy, Lord Jesus, and you're going to bring just comfort for all of us and keep us safe and sound. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys in the next case. Stay woke.